Um, Prophet Mary George, what do you want to say about that? It, 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 a recession tends to wake up the entrepreneur within you by forcing you to find another way to survive. Um, another way to provide, you, you realize that you're dependent on one thing, but when the recession comes, you will move on to something else. I think about the scripture when Jesus says, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. You're in that recession, but you're not of that recession because you're not participating in that recession. And that is when the giant, the sleeping giant is going to wake up in you. And do, you're going to go on and do things that you thought you couldn't even do. So that's why, the, you know, the recession is good because it's waking up. You then got so comfortable for that little job you was on, and the recession come to say, well, you can move on, own your own business. So it's waking up the giant within you. My God. Thank you, Prophetess Mary Jordan. Now, I want to share something else with you, and let's go to first, first, I mean, Second Chronicles chapter 1, 2 Chronicles chapter 1, <coughs> and I don't want any of you to go anywhere. Stay right here. And, and, and we want everyone to get their seed tonight. Now, I feel a mega shift. I talked to you all about mega shift before. Mm -hmm. I feel a what? A mega, mega shift. shift. A mega shift. Mm. And this I want to bring to your attention. Old kings fall while new kings while new kings stand in a recession. Hmm. Old kings fall while new kings stand in a recession. Old kings. Old systems fall. Now, people who are attached to their crowns, mm -hmm. which is their money, read Prophet Kelly. In the midst of a recession, tend to lose them. In order to attract money, one important rule is not to be attached to money. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Now, Prophet Kelly, what would you say about that? Well, Master Prophet, you can't attract money if you are attached to money. You've got to be able to keep yourself free to circulate money. If you're attached to money, then that means that nothing else can be attached to you. Mm -hmm. But if you're detached from money, you're allowed to be attracted to you and keep it circulating. As you give it out, it comes back in. So you keep attracting it. Amen. Prophet Deborah, what do you want to say about that? Master Prophet, that is so powerful because as long as you keep money circulating, you know that it's working for you, it's working on your behalf. But once you begin to allow that money to just stick to you it can't be free to do what it has been called to do and you can't be free to continue to create and to manifest more mm. amen prophet thompson and you know master prophet it brings to mind it's in the ebb and it's in the flow because once money flow it will grow and if you try to keep it stagnated it cannot be, cause you to be elevated you got to allow it to flow 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 all right, don't get too attached. Now, Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7. Are you ready to read that, Prophet Kelly? Yes, I am. Go ahead. In that night God, did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. Ask what shall I give thee. Read on. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast shewed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge. Give me what? Wisdom, wisdom and, and knowledge. knowledge. Now, do you think that Solomon began to realize what is the true baby maker of money? Yeah. Yes, most definitely. Because... You cannot be a, an entrepreneur, an, a successful entrepreneur, unless you have wisdom. Which means recession is the alarm clock 
to wake up the sleeping giant within you. And some of you don't even realize it, but not only should you be an entrepreneur, but I want to introduce you another term, an infopreneur. Infopreneur. Yes. Mm. Like some of you don't even realize the value of this text that I want to put into your hands when you do the $1,000 scene. And this here is loaded. This is 357 pages. On the last page, it has here what we have learned in this very last chapter. It says, your values are your silver of God's conscience. Values are your spirit speaking to your material mind. <laughs> Values, not actions, inspires others to enlightenment. Are you ready for this? Values do not change. We change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. You know, and, and so this here book is, is going to be a powerful work in your life. What are God's values? God is all values. God has no values in the human sense. Faith, hope, and charity. You know, we, so, so we're going to get into some stuff here. And there's exercises that go with each chapter. And when you learn these principles, you're going to find out how rich you will become in God. <coughs> now, um, the cost of tonight's call, I'm going to write this down, $598.88. And I want to get those individuals that will underwrite that call. They will get three series tonight if they would request it. I'm looking for 12 to underwrite this tonight. And this is what you will get. You will get cosmic economics. I will throw in the marital union of thought, which is 28 CDs. And I will throw in one other special. That's the business of getting rich. 20 CDs on the business of getting rich, and a textbook. It's over a $1,000 <coughs> value. You might as well do the $1,000 and get all of those materials and say, can I also have your new manuscript, Master Prophet? Mm -hmm. I think I need to build myself with a lot of information. Wow. So that I can become wealthy. How would you become wealthy with all that stuff? I could start becoming an infopreneur. infopreneur. People come to me for information, and then they pay me for the information or the insight I give them. 212-316-2177. OK, so wisdom and knowledge. Give me now wisdom and knowledge. Read on. That I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this people? This is so great. And God said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet has asked long life, but has asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I made thee king. See, not because you've asked for money, prophets, but you've asked for the prophetic word of wisdom and knowledge and insight. So people would have direction in recession, direction in their times of needs. I'm going to make you wealthy because the wisdom and the insight is going to lead you to the place of where the treasure is. That's why Solomon could say wisdom is better than silver and gold. You cannot be a successful entrepreneur without wisdom.